Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I'm a cloudy sheep and we will be playing Rule of <laughs> Rule of the Waves. Um, Rule of the Waves is, as it says, a naval arms race and naval battle simulator. So you have two aspects to this game. Um, the design of, of naval arms um, and, and fleets and fighting, actually fighting battles um, with these fleets that you have designed. Now, this does cover the, the prime period of, of the battleship, so the early 20th century, um, actually just the tiniest bit of, of the 1890s as well. Um, and that is a very interesting time for shipbuilding, because in during that, that period of time, um, we can see that um, the ship in the background that you can see here um, is just one of the very important dreadnoughts, um, as probably most of you might know or not. Uh, in 1905, um, the British built actually um, a completely new ship design. Before that, um, ships were really kind of a mix mix uh, batch of things with a couple of cannons, um, and they started out with this Gretnoff concept uh, where you have some huge guns, just compare that to the, these people over here, um, that were capable of firing on the enemy. So we will be playing this uh, nice little game, I'll talk you through it um, over here. Um, we can pick our starting nations, and all of these can be very interesting ones. Uh, we will be going with the US of A. Um, so, typical um, process over here. Um, you can see that there's a game naval budget and a historical budget. We could play with either. But with the US, I think um, it's more interesting to go with the game naval budget. Um, and the reason for that is that some of these nations, as you can see, have been are uh, hugely uplifted. So it will be a bit more challenging if a couple of our rivals um, get a bit of a boost. Um, our boost will actually be rather small, um, but nevertheless. Yeah. Um, we will be seeing rapid economic growth, but we will be starting from a comparatively low base. So especially when you compare that to um, Great Britain, which of course was the uh, prime um, naval power. Um, we do. We are technology leader, um, and, and there are some good aspects. And you can see we do have naval guns available. Um, so all of this should be fine. Let's let's go ahead and start the game. Uh, we will be game slot one over here. We'll be taking medium fleets uh, sizes. Uh, we will not be going with historical resources, as I just said, um, and we will not design our legacy fleet. So we will be basically um, be um, the the um, guy who comes in at 1899 um, and has to live with whatever there is. Um, we could also play with varied technologies over here. That does mean that um, technologies are a bit less um, uncertain. So we don't know exactly uh, what will be good concepts to have. And um, that would be very interesting. Um, but for now, I think it's a bit more, let's go along the historical lines and, and see what we got. So this is actually um, the main <laughs> screen of, of the battle, and as you can see, it's, it's rather fancy. So um, let's look at the map first. So here you go. This is the world. Let's zoom out a bit so we've actually got everything on it. And you can see we have a couple of bases, and, and so does every other uh, naval power in the game. Um, the naval powers that are there are over here, and this is a very important aspect of the game. This is the tension um, part. So once um, the tensions with one of these countries gets too high um, along these lines, or, or along this line probably, uh, we'd be probably getting um, into a war situation with them. So, but for now, you can see everything is, is pretty low, um, so nothing too, too bad um, going on there. Um, we do have a budget down here, so we have an annual budget of $92 million um, to build ships. Um, that boils down to uh, these monthly rounds uh, down here as, as such, so 7.7 .7 million, um, a lot of which we are spending on maintenance and construction and research. Um, actually, I think the first thing that we'll be looking here is uh, the research screen. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of areas um, where research is going on um, that has culminated in, in these guns over here, and we'll talk about that in a second. But for now, um, now you know what, before we actually go into that, let's look at the ships that are in service. And let's look at the New York class. Um, so these are all the ships, and you can see the type, battleship, 
heavy cruiser, light cruiser destroyer over here. Uh, and we'll be looking at the New York class battleship over here. Yes, and this is the graphic of the game. Uh, we can actually render a, a, um, a picture for this. Yeah, uh, generate a picture, please. Um, generate. So uh, we could say that this is probably more or less the, the ship. Let's add a couple of things. We won't be doing that too, too much, but. Um, just for now, it might be nice to get a bit more realistic um, feeling. So, um, we could also play around with this a bit. But, um, ram. So, it's, it's a bit like that. Yeah. Why not? Come on. Let's do. Yeah. Use an exit. So, the main thing though is that this is a, um, a ship with four 12 inch guns, front and back over here. Uh, 16 6 inch guns, um, these are the ones that you can barely see over here, um, and 12 13 inch guns, which are not displayed. It also has a couple of torpedo tubes um, and quite a bit of armor. Though, although for a battleship, that's actually not too, too much. Um, so we do have belt armor, um, deck armor so from the top, and the turrets are separately armored, um, and the secondary weapons here are also slightly armored. And this is the conning tower, so the command um, central of um, the ship, and all of these are armed with, um, well, eight inches or seven to eight inches um, of, of steel. So um, let's have a look at our fleet here. So we only have New York class battleships, which I like. Um, we do have two types of, of heavy cruisers. Um, one of them is actually much heavier than the other one, um, but that's fine. Um, also, you can see the speed over here, by the way, there's a small description of the guns and the maintenance that we pay for this. Um, we can also look at this design of this ship. So, let's open the design, and as you can see, and as can be expected of, of a game like that, there's a lot more information going on. So, you can see all the armor over here, you can see the displacement in, in tons, um, the speed of the design, the gun layout of the main guns. Um, the secondary guns, the tertiary guns, torpedo tubes, um, all uh, all of that basically. Uh, we do see that we are slightly overweight with this um, design, so it's it's a bit more than its nominal uh, tonnage, but it's not too too bad. So that's fine. Um, let's also briefly look at our heavy cruisers. First, the true heavy cruisers. So two nine um, inch guns and single turrets over here. Um, and a couple of um, smaller guns. So it's not actually that far away from, from our battleship, as you can see, uh, in terms of the secondary battery. Although, of course, it will probably have a lot less armor. Can we actually look at that? Yeah, well, no, not, not that much, actually. I, I believe the uh, New York class had 7.5 inches. Um, and this one is actually more armored on the uh, conning tower. So, yeah, it's it's a pretty strong um, ship as well. The Pittsburgh over here though uh, is probably a lot less so. Yeah, there's four um, turrets of of two guns each, and um, so the broadside might actually be. Oh no, these are just six gun six inch guns. So uh, I'm not sure about how how I feel about that. Um, one type of light cruiser. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, can see one more thing that you know the speed over here and uh, this L designation means that this is um, suited for long range um, operations and destroyers over here um, yeah that looks fine I guess and uh, you can see that the decatur here on the other hand is designated for short range operations and um, so it's a bit more geared towards um, a, a, yeah short short being on station and more of, of coasting Progressively, of course, the uh, destroyers are really, really tiny, uh, with just one little gun um, and four minor guns, uh, but two torpedo tubes, uh, which you can see over here, uh, which are above water, but which are not that interesting to us. So, that being said, let's go back to research. Um, first of all, I want to um, increase our budget for research a bit. You can see that currently we are spending 600000 a dollar per month, and we'll want to up that a bit. 
We can also set priorities for our research, and I definitely think uh, that we want to have better guns with a high priority. Uh, we also want better just general ship design, um, better turrets, better damage control, fire control, always a high priority. Hull construction, yes, all that is fine. Uh, we'll be looking a bit less at submarines, to be honest, and a bit less at torpedoes. Um, so that, you know, the high priority ones um, do get a bit of upgrades. Um, other than that, I do think this looks really good. should see a bit more um, money going into research here. Or we'll even go to 11%. No, 10% is the most that we can do. So that's fine. Um, these are the um, ships that we do have in service. You can see most of them are in, uh, in fact, in North Africa. North, e uh, North American East Coast, um, so over here, and that is indeed what we should see here. Five battleships, two heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, 15 um, destroyers. And you can see that Great Britain, um, in its places here, over here in Canada, and British Virgin Islands, I want to say, um, do also have a couple of sh uh, ships, but not quite as many. You can also see that they do have a bit of basing capacity, uh, whereas we really have quite a bit of that. Um, so that looks good. We do have one cruiser over here staying in Southeast Asia. Um, so that's a bit of a colonial ship and that I think is fine. Uh, we do need to place some tonnage on foreign stations and um, just to make sure our prestige, which is the primary wind indicator, uh, doesn't decrease too far. Uh, national unrest is not meaningful for now, the dock size is okay, and that determines obviously how big um, the ships that we can build are. So I'm pretty content with this, let's look at what's our under construction. Uh, so there's a new Montana class battleship, uh, which does it's a bit of an increased um, displacement compared to the New York class, and it does also have, I believe, for 12 inch guns and the secondary batteries is slightly better. Instead of 16 six inch guns we have 4, 7, ah well it's more or less the same I guess but it's also better armored. So yeah there's a new ship class under construction uh, which of course doesn't invalidate what we have so far. Also light cruiser Olympia class so I guess that's new as well. Yes. Um, what's the deal with that? Training 2 speed, but not the long range designation. Um, ready in 10 months at a cost of $700,000 per month. So about $7 million. Which you'll notice is, is about a 12th of our annual budget. 8 5 inch guns um, compared to what? Um, 12 4 inch guns. Not sure what really is better. And uh, lastly, a Brooklyn class heavy cruiser. So more of these. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, we do have a bit of um, money left. Um, so I think that we might want to design another ship. Um, and that is really the core of the game. Um, much of that is with the very sexy battleships and, and heavy cruisers. Um, and I'm kind of content about them those. Um, although I think um, that we might want to, you know, these are really, really expensive heavy cruisers. You can see they, even in maintenance, they are nearly as much as um, a battleship. And even though the Pittsburgh um, does kind of fill the role a bit better, um, I want to design another ship. So let's clear this. Um, let's pick a heavy cruiser. Um, that would be the San Diego class. Um, we do have this outer design chip, um, which I think is a good, good first indication of what you could build. Um, so they do give us a high caliber. Dear God, that really is a high caliber. Um, ten caliber guns, ten inch caliber guns. 14,000 displacement, so that's not entirely what we have in mind. We want to have something that is more affordable. Um, but before we do that, let's go back to research 
briefly and have a look at the naval guns over here. Uh, we can go up to 12 inch guns, that's in fact available, um, but only at a reduced quality. And 10 inch guns, on the other hand, are the one um, gun that, that is, or the heaviest gun that we have that is at least at normal quality. So, there's something to be said about having this high, high caliber, but yeah, I'm not sure. So, let's, let's see, maybe we can get away with this. Um, probably not, though. So, um, what we in fact want is a colonial cruiser. So, um, something that has an extended range, um, that has an engine that is more set to reliability, Notice the machinery weight here will go up slightly. So we are taking um, a 32,000 horsepower machinery, um, but we are having it slightly less um, or more reliable um, and therefore are um, considering a, a higher weight here. Um, the speed, I believe, 23 knots for Colonial Cruiser is maybe a bit excessive. Um, let's go down to 22. So the machinery, of course, decreases as well. Uh, we do want to set this to colonial service, uh, which means that there's a slight tonnage increase, uh, basically for marine quarters and, and some standard uh, things. Um, again, this is way too expensive, way, way, way too expensive um, to, to what I have in mind. Um, so we, we really want to, this to be more like maybe 9,000 tons. Let's, let's see if we can do that. Um, of course, right now we can't, because the game just decided not to do that. Um, actually, we do want a forward gun, in a double turret, and we want an off gun in a double turret. Oh, can we tell? Yeah, we have 3,000 tons over, um, over our displacement, so that's no good. Um, I think it's prudent to turn down the number of secondary guns. Eight on each side. Yeah, that looks good. Um, we might get by without using tertiary guns. Um, by the way, show the turret arcs, so that's fine. Um, and I think we will be relying on much, much less um, belt and armor. Um, belt coverage normal, I think, might be fine. And the extended belt is going to be a lot less. And the deck armor, so the top armor, basically. Um, Five, I think, is fine. Extended deck armor one is okay. Um, still a bit overweight. The turrets. I think the turret top should at least be two. Secondaries can be two. That should be big. Um, big saver. Two is a magic number because um, at two splinters um, can't penetrate you. And for secondary guns uh, at two the game will consider that you are using shields, um, so gun shields rather than uh, fully enclosed um, things. I think we can, yeah, so um, use that as, as gun turrets, um, even though the graphic um, here is um, slightly off. Um, I think the conning tower can be more like a six, the turrets maybe a four, are still a lot overweight. Ten inch guns maybe really are a bit for a colonial cruiser maybe of this type a bit too much. Let's look at the weight distribution. I mean the hull and fittings it's about a third machinery half of that again. The armor really is quite a lot but the armament is isn't that bad? It's 400 tons per turret. Could choose a narrow belt so that the belt doesn't extend quite as far. Um, it's 200. Um, let's let's briefly check whether this design would be legal. Oh, also the fire control system. Um, central range finder would be good. Um, let's check it now. If there's a narrow belt, we know that, that's a design decision, and it's considerably overweight. Um, yes, we know that as well. Um, so it would be okay, this is a design that would work, um, but it wouldn't be ideal. So 
I don't want to I mean we could say that you know being on on station somewhere it doesn't necessarily need the long range okay let's let's go with medium so it, it's gonna be on station in our colonial possessions um, and it's not gonna go um, to, to another um, area so yeah I think that looks much better now of course um, maybe we can increase the number of secondary guns Five per side, I think that would be a good idea. Um, if we turn this to normal, no. I think I'm fine with narrow. The difference between the belt and the extended belt isn't that great. Um, the turrets can maybe get a bit more armor. Yes, that's lovely. Uh, what if we turn the extended belt up a bit? Yeah, that looks good. No, I think that's that's going to be fantastic. So. San Diego design um, does have a narrow belt, that's fine. Uh, we have saved it, we want to go build one. Um, so we will pick one ship, of course, the San Diego itself. Uh, we will build one for now um, at a cost of 34 million uh, US dollar. And uh, note that this is much more um, than the ships that are currently built, and because the game considers those to be somewhat built already. And will take nearly two years. Um, to build this and this will be one of the most interesting aspects of the game to balance building new ships versus uh, thinking about you know waiting for one more research tick uh, maybe getting something that is slightly better and then you know trying to, to go wrong um, ultimately uh, our maintenance cost here is only slightly going to be slightly lower than with Brooklyn class um, but I still believe you know with two um, with four, in fact, four 10-inch guns, um, you know, we, we have a much better ship um, at a lower cost. So, um, at least for what it's supposed to do. So, yeah, I'm going to be fine with that. And the game is now going to tell us that the first ship of any class generates extra costs, uh, which is about 10%, a bit less in this case. So, that's going to be fine. So, the monthly build cost will, in fact, be, I think, a bit um, above 1.7 million. So here we go, San Diego. Oh yeah, no, it's it's pretty close to that. Um, here we go. So San Diego being built um, at a very high cost, of course, um, it's it's eating up all of our budgets, and that is in fact not very good. Um, but I still believe we should uh, try to to go ahead with something like that. Um, since our monthly budget is now a bit um, strained I would say. I'm gonna um, hold the construction of the Olympia for now so that we do have some um, monthly benefits. So enough talking um, about this. Let's um, advance the game. Um, before we do that let's briefly look here. Yeah, we do have some coastal fortifications, especially in the eastern US. Um, there are no ships sunk of course um, and I don't think there's much to be said about this. Um, these blue lines are what areas are connected, um, but other than that really, I think things should be self-explanatory. So, oh, oh, by the way, we could go ahead and briefly check uh, our own possessions. So, uh, as in the US, of course, we do have a lot of possessions in the eastern and western uh, North American coasts. So, North American East Coast, North, North American West Coast, there's a lot of US basing capacity here. Um, there's some bases in the Caribbean, Breton Bay, um, Puerto Rico, and Panama, and that does give us basing capacity. Um, and there are not that many competitors over here, maybe the UK um, somewhat. Um, the home markets or home regions of most of the Europeans are either in North, uh, Northern Europe or Southern Europe, or Mediterranean rather, uh, over here. Um, there's some colonial possessions of everyone in Africa, except us. Uh, we do, however, have uh, the Philippines and Guam over here. So. Uh, and that's about it. Something um, we will see about the dynamics of, of who we go to war with later. Um, we do have a limited uh, capability to decide that. We are really considered to be the um, the head of the lead development, um, and you know the president will ultimately decide who who we go to war with. 
Um, although we can steer him somewhat um, in, in one direction or the other. Um, from my point of view, I would like to um, get maybe a base in Northeast Asia because um, Japan over here might be one of our rivals and, and it would be a good idea to, to have a base um, over here. Um, a base in Europe will probably be very difficult. Southern Europe might be fine. All right. Um, I don't think I need to talk a, bit, a lot about these things. Um, building ships, building submarines, building forts. That's pretty straightforward. Um, it, we can train um, our fleet for gunnery, night fighting, torpedo warfare. Uh, we can take a lot of the different sort of ammo layouts and, and uh, that sort of thing. But um, for now, um, I'm, I'm going to try away from that. Um, gunnery target would mean that the maintenance is a lot higher. Um, and that will work uh, right now. So, yeah, let's, let's advance one turn and see what's going on. So, Germany has, uh, is starting to produce um, a destroyer. We can maybe have a look at, at what ships they do have um, over here. So, the G8 um, class, I believe, is a 500 ton destroyer. Um, that we know pretty much nothing about. Yeah, but that's fine. Um, no, in fact, they, they don't seem to have any destroyers right now. We do have quite a lot of battleships. Yeah, yeah well, oh wait. Um, it's turn. More destroyers being built, uh, not much else going on. Um, that's fine. Yeah, more. Let's get to at least one uh, bigger decision. Um, more um, commissioning actually of destroyers and not um, being built. Um, we do get some intelligence reports for Japan here. So uh, we do know, or at least think, we know that the uh, Yakamuo is rumored to carry 9 inch main guns on the heavy cruisers. Um, let's remind ourselves of our own heavy cruisers um, and in particular the San Diego class um, that does carry um, slightly better or bigger guns. Um, so that's a relief um, because our colonial cruisers of course might specifically um, be around in the um, Caribbean um, and around the Philippines. So it would be really nice if the Philippines here uh, were to have better cruisers than maybe Japan will have. Let's see if we can get to um, a decision. Um, our scientists um, are a bit behind by active mine warfare but that believe is okay. Um, Germany commissioning a lot of their destroyers and um, so is everyone else. Um, it does remind me, we do have destroyers though, so I don't think that's that's as big of a deal. Um, we do have a bit of budget over those, so uh, I'm gonna design very quickly one more ship um, and that is gonna be just a motor ship. Um, so just a name um, to auto design that. So that's a tiny, tiny little 200 ton um, patrol boat, um, basically, without any armor, uh, with tiny, tiny little guns um, and a bit weight remaining. So, yeah. Okay, that is probably not legal because the caliber of the um, secondary guns is smaller than the caliber of the main guns. Let's check that. Yeah, and that is indeed an error uh, that we must correct. So, yeah, let's, let's check whether that is okay. Too many or have <laughs> Yeah, so it, it can't even carry that many guns. Uh, let's check it out. Okay, so yeah, that looks okay. It's, it's not going to be a great ship. Can we increase the speed more? 18 knots. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, let's use it. Motor ship, yes, we want to build um, quite a lot of these actually, um, maybe around 10 um, so we can patrol um, our coast and, and all that. Um, but the monthly build cost is not okay for that. Let's, let's limit ourselves to one um, to get the prototype. Um, that does cost a bit, cost a bit extra, um, but that's going to be done in six months. Um, the other ships are coming in in. 
Oh, this one's halted. Yeah, um, and the other ships are coming in in about one to two two years. Um, last turn. Yeah, so more ships being laid down, uh, a lot of ships being commissioned by our potential rivals, um, but the Montana is uh, slightly delayed, um, so delayed by, by about a month um, at additional cost, of course, um, but that's the way it is in, in Chipotle. And anyway, um, we will be playing this game. Uh, we've played half a year now. Um, no, nothing um, too serious now. Uh, it's by a bit, just a tiny bit, um, on Russia because they are getting slightly, um, slightly threatening over here. And I might indeed like um, if we uh, were to get the Liu Chung Peninsula um, in in a future war, or maybe. And we'd like to know a bit more about their designs. Um, that being said, um, it's been half an hour. Uh, we can briefly have a look at uh, what the enemies are currently doing. Uh, we can see that our budget is somewhat in line with a lot of these players. Um, a lot larger than Japan, Japan or Italy, uh, but tiny compared to, to Great Britain. Um, and in fact. We do not have a lot of um, tonnage in, in battle ships, especially the UK um, is is really dominating us um, in, in battle ship um, tonnage, both in, in terms of even, even when we consider what we are currently building. Um, other than that, that looks broadly in line with it, what everyone else is doing. Russia may be focusing a bit more on heavy cruisers. Uh, light cruisers is very far behind, um, especially Great Britain, but also Germany. Um, destroyers, I guess. Yeah, that's probably okay. Uh, armored merchant cruisers, motor ships, that's, that's fine. Okay, so we will be looking to, to expand, especially our light cruiser fleet, um, a bit in the future. But that's going to have to wait until next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.